in Africa, poor electricity access is one of the biggest developmental challenges facing many countries on the beautiful continent. Across the continent, millions of people live in perpetual darkness. Some are unable to get access to electricity for essential household use such as lightning, charging phones and laptops, among others. In Africa, 650 million people don't have electricity don't have access to power, don't have access to an industry. People who would otherwise have been very productive if they'd had the means, if they had the capital. It's really important that we don't lose sight of these people in our bid to grow our economies and become more industrialized. However, some countries like Egypt, Algeria, Morocco and Tunisia are all having 100% energy access. Ghana has about 84% energy access. But the government's aim is to achieve the universal access by the year 2025 in a sustainable way. And that means the country is still in need of additional 16% energy to hit its 100% target. And the 16% must come from renewable sources. Currently, Ghana's energy mix is a mix of renewable and non-renewable sources. The most important energy source of the country is the hydro. And the hydro accounts for about 35% of electricity generation. Thermal plants, which uses crude oil and natural gas, also accounts for about 60% of the country's energy. And just 5% comes from renewable sources, which include solar and wind. Ghana has a good potential for renewable energy, but it is still underutilized. The government has set a target of moving from 5% to 10% renewable energy by the year 2030. This is quite ambitious, so to achieve this target, the government is now investing more and more in renewable energy projects and also creating a conducive environment for the private sector to invest in renewable energy in the country. Now, talking about renewable energy in Ghana, let's talk about the sun, I mean solar energy. Ghana is one of the countries in the world with high level of solar irradiation. The country receives an average of 4.5 kilowatt hour of solar radiation per day. And this is considered to be a higher level of solar irradiation, meaning Ghana has the potential to generate a significant amount of solar power. The average number of sunshine hour per day in Ghana is also higher, with most locations receiving between 210 and 240 hours per month, which makes Ghana an ideal location for solar power generation. Generation. So now, the question people are asking is that, why is Ghana not utilizing the full potential of its sun by generating more energy from it as countries like China, the United States and Germany are doing? Well, the Ghanaian minister responsible for energy, Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe, is here to give us the right answer. But before that, please don't forget to like this video and also subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for your liking. Now, enjoy. There was this, for a long time, there was this huge debate. Uh, if the water is free, why are we paying so much at the pumps issue? Of course, God gave us the water for free, but the pipes and the treatment of the water before it gets to your house was not given to us for free. God has given us the sun, and I make this analogy. I'll keep making it. The places with the highest solar radiation happen to be the countries with the largest amount, highest or biggest amount of deserts. And the good Lord still put all the oil in that land for them to exploit. There's a balance. Like I started saying before I, my time was up, when you look at Ghana, it's a really forested country. Uh, we had semi deciduous forest in the, in the north of the country. We don't have savanna or, or, or desert, right? When you look at solar, to do large-scale solar, go to wherever there's a large-scale plant. Uh, even in those countries that have adopted it, they are doing it in probably bare areas. We don't have that in Ghana. It might mean you are cutting trees. It may mean you cut large numbers of trees to deploy solar, which in itself, in, that, in this current agenda, it is a no-go area. Countries are paying billions for people just to keep their rainforest because it's the single biggest 
anti-climate change tool that we have in the world. If Brazil decides to lock, and Congo Brazil decides to lock, and Korea Guinea decides to lock all their forests, we are dead already. No matter the CCSU or technology we have, we'll be dead. So we have to balance. And in this balancing, I was saying in Ghana, where we have the infrastructure to wheel this energy from solar, is exactly those places we can't cut trees. You can't go to Western region or Ashanti region or Eastern region in Ghana or for the part of Volta region and go and cut a huge tree to create a park for a 100 megawatt plant. So when you come back to Ghana, you see that we are trying to do very innovative things. We are trying to put solar panels on the hydro dams that we have because that is a large catchment area that we are not using for anything much, so we can use it. So we power further up in the north has experimented and is deploying solar PV panels on these water surfaces that we seem to have around. We also have to improve the transmission, uh, that means substations and the electrical lines to be able to put these power plants in those huge areas. That is also an investment that will come. So it is not easy as if Ghana, we don't want to deploy solar. I talked about the laws that we have passed to incentivize individuals. We say that by 2070, all our energy equipment that appliances that we use in the country should be first class energy efficient. We said it. We said 90% of the rural country should be using LPG. We've said it because we know the circumstance in the country and it is not as easy as we can deploy solar because the sun is there. The good Lord, the country with the largest uh, production of oil, the good Lord put the oil there and it's eight, probably 90% desert, Saudi Arabia. It means we have to live with balance, not one against the other. Thank you. So let us know your thoughts and suggestions on this inside the comment section below. My name is Sharif Haruna. Thank you very much for watching this episode. Please like, subscribe, have a joyful life, and see you in our next video. Macrao.